If there is one man over the years who I have turned to for political analysis and a lot of political perspective, it is Yogendra Yadav, and it's a pleasure chatting with him right here on what is being called uh, the big semi-final before the grand finale. Thanks very much, Mr. Yadav, for being with us. Uh, the picture still emerging. Uh, it is a photo finish of sorts as far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, extremely neck and neck. Uh, clear gains for the Congress in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. Uh, Telangana, it looks like uh, it's advantage TRS and the gamble that he played with uh, advancing elections has paid off. Uh, Mizoram is a bastion that the Congress uh, has given up. Uh, your first quick big takeaway from these elections, uh, is this going to and should put the BJP in a point of bother? Uh, it is clear disadvantage BJP in terms of uh, popular sentiment. Popular sentiment, at least in these three critical Hindi heartland states, is shifting against the BJP. But it is an organizational setback to the Congress. The astonishing thing is Congress's inability to convert what is clearly a resentment, uh, unhappiness, disillusionment with the BJP in these states into a clear victory. I'm, you know, the most stunning thing is that the Congress is still struggling to get to the majority mark in Rajasthan, a place mm. where there was arrogance of the BJP government, there were serious allegations of corruption, uh, there was agrarian distress, everything going against the BJP. And in that state, if the Congress is struggling, that gives you a sense of what kind of a party Congress is. Mm. What we know from today's verdict is what doesn't work. Monday doesn't work. BJP tried. Mr. Yogi did lots of uh, meetings. That doesn't work. Uh, pure election coalition arithmetic doesn't work. They'll, otherwise, in Telangana, it should have worked. What we know is that the, this disillusionment with BJP has set in, but that disillusionment cannot be encashed automatically unless there is a vision, unless there is an alternative narrative, right. and the Congress is unable to offer that. No, I think that's, that's putting it rather well, that the disillusion may have set in. And I think a lot of the disillusionment is also on account of the fact that there was an exuberant promise that was made in 2014. Some of that promise was so unreal that one could have never lived up to it, and which is why the disillusionment has set in. And you're right that, you know, there, there are no viable alternatives available on the other side, and, and the organization uh, uh, is perhaps lacking. And I will come to that in just a bit. I mean, nothing explains the fact that 165 is what the BJP was at when they won Rajasthan, and the Congress is struggling to find, uh, you know, get itself to the halfway mark on its own and, uh, you know, beginning to talk to allies and things like that. But Mr. Yadav, uh, I, I will first focus on the ruling party because to our constituents, what happens to the BJP and its fate uh, determines the market action and all of that. Uh, a lot of people are now beginning to worry about two things. The, the first thing is that the Hindi heartland, which is Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, is seriously disillusioned. Uh, if Mr. Modi has to come back to power uh, with a meaningful uh, number on the table in 2019, he's got to win this heartland hands down. And 65 of the seats in that heartland between these three states, of which the BJP has 62 already, don't seem to be going that way. Uh, that's the whole point. Uh, you know, one should not draw a conclusion from these three states about the entire country. This tells us nothing about what would happen in Tamil Nadu or Kerala or most of those places. But first of all, it tells us something about what would happen in these three states, which have 65 seats. I'm at the moment excluding Telangana because that's a unique situation. 65 seats, BJP 162. By today's reckoning, they are not getting even 30. And the historical record shows that whichever party does well in assembly election in these three states tend to do better in these three states in the parliamentary election within six months. So going by that record, BJP would be down to 20. Second, I think it's reasonable to say that these trends tell us something about the Hindi heartland, uh, neighboring states as well. What are the things that we can see? Number one, rural agrarian distress is for real and it is beginning to hurt. Critical sectors like Dalits and Adivasis, which BJP had for the first time got in 2014, are beginning to move away. Mm. Mandir doesn't work. And Mr. Modi's magic towards the end of the elections, which would swing the election finally, mm. doesn't seem to be working. These are broad conclusions we can draw. You are absolutely right. And this is about 226 seats of the Hindi belt which is what 2019 Lok Sabha election will be all about. Because in the rest of the 300 seats, BJP's gains and losses will be neutralized. BJP Ms. has to fight in these 226 seats. 
No, absolutely. That's that. That's the sum and substance of elections 2019. And I know a lot of people say Northeast gains. Northeast in all of it, and I, and I respect the mandate there, I respect the populace there, contributes to 25 Lok Sabha seats in all of uh, the Northeast put together. But Mr. Yadav, you raise an important point that the agrarian mess is for real. Uh, will I be too audacious to put a hypothesis on the table? And that hypothesis is that elections 2018 were not about Gotra, were not about religion, were not about Mandir. People worry more about growth, they worry about economic employment, they worry about jobs, they worry about, uh, you know, stressful situations on India's farms. Can I safely say that elections 2018 were about the economy? Uh, yes, uh, and it, 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 this is such a good news. Mm. All the pre-election opinion polls, and I watched these polls not for their forecast, but for the other data that they bring. They showed that job was number one. Traditionally, in Indian opinion polls, Mahangai, price rise has been number one, no matter what the rate of inflation in the country is. But this time, jobs were mentioned as the uppermost concern by the people. Strangely, none of the political party actually takes it up as a big issue. And none of the political party, none of the opposition, actually comes up with a narrative on the job question. So yes, it was about jobs. Number two, it was about agrarian distress. It was about rural distress in general. And uh, if we look at the pattern in different states, that is what has hurt the BJP most. Indeed it has, and, and, and which is why one question that I want to put forward on the BJP front and then move across to the other end of the political spectrum, and that question is that uh, whether it is about, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the verdict or otherwise, there is a fear, and this fear is obviously coming out of, I think, Governor Patel's own resignation uh, and all of that, and that fear is that uh, this verdict may tempt the government to go, uh, to pull the plugs on populism, to go... Uh, or, you know, to go all out as far as SOPs are concerned. And these are things that markets lose nerve on, they are concerned about. And given the fact that you've got a man who resisted uh, additional liquidity and resisted sharing of reserves and all of that, and, you know, those fears are also coming from the fact that could this be put to populist use, uh, is gone, uh, those fears are aggravated. Uh, do you, would you give credence to those fears? And do you, do you yourself, are you concerned that there could be spigots that will be opened up on uh, you know, lending, and that may not be the be best thing. BJP is worried. They have reasons to be concerned. And they put everything into elections. And for Mr. Modi, this election is make or break. So, yes, he would put everything. Uh, given his track record, we know that he would not honor or respect any institutional constraints. Someone who can go for demonetization, someone who can go for pushing the governor of RBI out, and we know the reasons, I mean, this is no secret why he's out, uh, would not hesitate to push it further. So yes, we should expect some, call it populist, call it something which would uh, desperate gamble for him to wean the voters back. Whether that desperate gamble ha takes place in Ayodhya or an Indo-Pakistan border or on the economy, we cannot be sure. But yes, we would expect a desperate gamble to be played by the government. No, absolutely, a desperate gamble indeed, but uh, a few last questions, and I think some of those questions will now have to come to the Congress party. Uh, the fact that, you know, it is not a sweep that people were referring to in Rajasthan, and now, you know, seat, sele seat selections and ticket distribution is being blamed, or the fact that Ra Madhya Pradesh continues to be neck and neck, and despite a three-term government that should have seen huge anti-incumbency, what does that tell you about the Congress's... Uh, oh, own cadre, own morale, own organization. Uh, the fact that, you know, they, and these were the strongest regional satraps, whether it's a Kamal Nath or a Jyotiradit Sindhya in Madhya Pradesh or a Gehloth and Pilot in Rajasthan, this was their best bet. Uh, they used to say Congress never misses a chance to miss a chance. <laughs> and uh, we are witnessing one more scenario of that kind. I mean, I'm truly astonished about Rajasthan. I've traveled there. I have sensed the anger in people because the regime was not only non-responsive, it was also very arrogant. So I know what Rajasthanis feel like. But uh, if this is what the result is, clearly Congress needs to do some serious soul searching. And if they think that this Mahagatbandhan is the only thing which is going to carry them forward, they are living in an unreal world. Telangana shows Mahagatbandhan alone is not the answer. Rajasthan shows unless you are serious about your organization, uh, there is no way forward. Madhya Pradesh shows, unless you come up with alternative narrative and unless you actually work on the ground, which is what they did in Chhattisgarh, and that's why they've done well. 
for the last four years, Congress played opposition in Chhattisgarh, which it did not in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. So Congress needs to get its act together. And uh, the larger picture is that while the people have made up their mind about what they want, they don't want Mandir, they want jobs, they want agrarian situation to improve, political parties are unable to respond creatively. And I think people are telling them a message, and if that message is not going to be delivered or will not resound, people will deliver a stronger message. But a quick last question before I go, uh, let you go. 2018 election, sir, in some sense, it is also uh, pointing us in a direction where the Congress did not stitch an alliance together in Madhya Pradesh, perhaps cost them about four or five seats there. Or, uh, you know, Chhattisgarh, they've won hands down, but, you know, the seat tally could have been a lot higher. Uh, is that what is also playing on people's mind, you know, on the minds of political parties now? Elections 2019 are going to be crucial elections, not just for the government on one hand, but also the opposition. And, and which is why uh, will, will, you know, these duels in states be important? And will we see many more of those alliances being stitched together? I hope we see more than alliances. Uh, it is crucial not only for the government. This election is critical not only for the opposition. It is critical for the future of India. The whole country can go in a direction which was never the direction of Republic of India if these elections go one way. So yes, this is a critical election. Uh, yes, opposition will sit down and talk about coalitions. But I do hope someone will think more than coalitions. The real issues of this election need to be brought forward. Uh, I just wanted to make one quick point. Sure. BJP had five big things going for it, five M's. There is electoral machine. Today's results show that the machine still works. Otherwise, BJP wouldn't be where it is in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, but for that election machine, mm. uh, which is to say organizational machine. I don't mean the EVMs. Mm. Number two, Mr. Modi continues to be more popular than others, but the image has been dented. His ability to swing elections decisively is now seriously uh, questioned. Third was Mandir. We clearly know it doesn't work. The fourth and fifth are things which will change from tomorrow. Money, and that's important on your channel. I think people sitting in Mumbai from tomorrow morning would wish to put your, their eggs not in one basket. Remember in all the electoral bonds, BJP got 95% funds given to all the political parties. Mm. I guess that's likely to change from tomorrow. And the final fifth thing is media. Allow me to say, and I do not certainly refer to your channel, we have seen one of the worst phase for Indian media ever. From tomorrow onwards, I expect the media would be a little more balanced, a little more correct in reporting what's actually happening in the country. And that would make 2019 into more of a level playing ground than it has been so far. With a lot of shame, I must ironically say I couldn't disagree with the last point that you make. And I think media has a lot of soul searching to do. But on that note, thank you very much, Mr. Yogin Yadav, for speaking to us. This is an important election, not just for the BJP, but the Congress, but also the people of this country. It will set the course, the tone, the narrative as far as 2019 is concerned. And so this is a decisive electoral battle that is playing out in full public glare. Thanks very much, Mr. Yadav, for being with us.